USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2013 USA Ultimate National Championships. The last game of our championship Sunday here in Frisco, Texas, seventh seeded Seattle Sockeye tries to upset number one San Francisco Revolver here at Frisco ISD Memorial Stadium. Thanks for joining us here this Sunday and we take a look at our bracket. To get here, Seattle Sockeye with a win over Boston Ironside yesterday and San Francisco Revolver with a win over Johnny Bravo out of Denver. Along with former Wake Forest Ultimate Captain Evan Lepler, Mike Cousins, and you can't ask for a much better match than this for our last on Championship Sunday, two perennial powerhouses in the men's division. And two perennial ultimate powerhouses in terms of communities, San Francisco and Seattle, two of the best. Revolver looking for its third title in four years, trying to match a feat that Sockeye achieved from 2004 to 2007. Sockeye has not won a title since they last won in 07. So Sockeye here trying for the upset bid. Their last title, as you mentioned, in 2007. They have had a great weekend, and their win over Ironside yesterday due in large part to their biggest downfield threat, Matt Raider. Matt Raider was unbelievable yesterday. A bunch of ridiculously athletic catches in the double game point win against Boston Ironside. He's a multi-sport athlete. He currently runs track and throws javelin for Division III Laverne University outside of Los Angeles, but a Seattle native and a really huge downfield threat for Seattle. San Francisco Revolver has won two out of the last three championships in the men's division. Last year, it was taken by Austin Double Wide. And the name everybody knows, Bo Kittredge, the sport's most dominant athlete. Revolver trying to win the Triple Crown. They won the U.S. Open. They were the regular season champs. And Bo Kittredge, an unstoppable force in our sport. The 2013 Farragher Award winner, a spirited player, and the MVP for Revolver in 2013. They're much more than one guy. They, they they prize themselves on their balance and great widespread offensive talent, but Poe Kittredge unrivaled in ultimate. San Francisco teams were denied a championship in the mixed and women's division. We'll see if top seed San Francisco can do it against Seattle Sockeye in a moment here from Frisco, Texas. Welcome to the USA Ultimate National Championships, the third and final leg of the Triple Crown Tour, Ultimate's highest level of competition. Everyone's invited. The USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultrastar 175 Sport Disc, the official championship disc of USA Ultimate since 1991. USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To find out more about the sport of Ultimate or where to play in your community, visit www.usaultimate.org. 48 teams of the USA Ultimate National Championship, 16 in the men's division, and we are down to two. Starting lineup first for Seattle's Sakai Murray, Raider, Castine, and Sefton, their cutters, Lennon, Kosedner, and Holt, the three handlers for this number seven seed. San Francisco Revolver head coach Mike Payne. Bo Kittredge will look out for him downfield. We also saw him as a handler yesterday as well, and Ashlyn Joy is a big part of getting the disc where it needs to be for San Francisco. You know, both these teams rely on their systems, rely on much more than one guy to be successful. Here's what you need to know if you're not familiar with the sport of ultimate. Welcome aboard. If you are, thanks for joining us. Seven on seven, first to 15 wins, although both of these teams due to a time cap one with 14 points yesterday. And it is a self-officiated sport, the most unique aspect of ultimate. Mutual respect between players on both sides. Seattle with the opening pull, and San Francisco Revolver trying to at least give the city of San Francisco one win today through the men's, women's, and mixed divisions. Yeah, Seattle pulling up wins, so San Francisco with the wind at their backs, and Kittredge had the pass get deed up by the former Callahan winner for Florida, Tim Garrett. These teams will quickly learn that wind is going to be a big factor today. Ashlyn Joy, the D, takes it back for San Francisco. Garrett with one D, enjoy another. Three members of the USA World Games team 
from this past summer, currently on San Francisco's revolver. Number 50, Bo Kittredge. Number 27, Ashlyn Joy. Number 40, Mac Taylor, who plays for the D-line. And this looks like one of the captains, Nick Schlag, shaken up. Ashlyn Joy kneeling next to his co-captain and beloved teammate. Here's Mike Payne, the head coach of Revolver, out to have a look at Schlag. Next we'll get to see him back on his feet. Revolver. That was that was with Nick Schlag, one of the many Revolver. former Stanford bloodthirsty players now on Revolver. Considered to be sort of a long-term thinker. Not the most vocal guy, but when he talks his teammates listen. Schlag joined Revolver in 2009, won a championship in 2010 and 2011. Lost in the finals in 2009 and 2012. So the fifth straight year that Revolver is playing on Championship Sunday. Incredible consistency, but so far today, Mike, it hasn't been good news to be the favorite. No, upset-minded teams have had their way. You're at Frisco ISD Memorial Stadium. After that injury substitution, by the way, Matt Raider did come in for Sakai as he replaced Tyler Kinley. Feed in the end zone, and Revolver has got the first score. Jordan Jeffrey. Interesting that they bring in Raider for defensive purposes, more of an offensive threat. The thing that strikes you consistently about Revolver is just how calm they are, especially near the end zone. Matt Raider will stay on offensively for Sockeye. Some of the main Seattle offensive players include Vero Titcomb, Phil Murray. One of the captains, Danny Karlinski. Jordan Jeffrey, a solid contributor. Another Stanford alum. Pretty amazing that Matt Rader, who we highlighted off the top, joined Sockeye as a 16-year-old. Sockeye winning three out of four years, 2004, 2006, and 2007. Russell the Palmer Obviously, there's been much more diversity among champions compared to the women's division when San Francisco Fury won seven straight years. But if you missed it earlier today, the ladies from Washington, D.C. prevented San Francisco's Fury from winning an eighth straight title. Championship number one for the guy who coached Revolver the last couple of years, Alex Gesquier. Raider in the end zone, fights through contact. Big celebration for the youngster on Sakai as he helps to make it 1-1. Celebration was perhaps more epic than the score. He threw a blade a long way. Mac Taylor with good closing speed, but great concentration from Raider. And he tossed that disc, it got caught up in the wind and probably went about 50 or 60 yards beyond the end zone. But this is what makes Raider tough. Obviously, he's been playing the game for a while. For a 22-year-old veteran, he has more savvy than the typical guy who's still in college. His 12th goal of the weekend. Now, he's been somewhat of a security valve for Sakai, when things aren't going well, it'll be Raider that'll streak deep. They'll need him to have a big day. Yesterday, two goals, two assists, and a win over Boston Ironside. Raider staying out there on the defensive line. Evan, what's it going to take today for Seattle Sakai to score yet another upset against San Francisco teams? Well, yesterday, Mike, the offense for Sakai was incredible. You know, it was calm, collected, 
and very rarely got broken against Boston, who's known for its pretty strong defense. The offensive consistency is going to need to be there just like yesterday. Four-man cup in the zone defense here, even though it's a downwind point for Revolver. Let's see how long they stay in the zone. It looks like it's broken pretty good. Nathan White and Bo Kittry are just able to play catch. They do reset the cup. Now it's more of a three-man cup with a short deep, two wings and a deep deep. Not in once, but there you go. Travel called. Travel called. Bo Kittredge with the disc. Just outside the end zone. And he goes the same way, and Revolver gets the score. So they break the cup rather easily. We saw that strategy pay off a few times for Washington, D.C. scandal in the women's final. But let's take a look at how they break this zone defense. Yeah, there was just a little loose pocket in that cup, a window to get the first throw off. And once you get the first throw, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth are pretty simple. Kittredge, an easy flip to the end zone. You know, it can be discouraging for a team. You, you put that zone defense on, and you basically have it shredded. And the question is, do you go back to it a second time, or do you simply abandon it? Mike Payne said yesterday that, you know, he feels the Seattle team will put some junky defense on early in the game to try to flummox Revolver a little bit. And Revolver's key today was to be patient and work through that junk zone defense, sort of force them to play man because he feels really confident in San Francisco's man offense against anybody, including a team like Seattle that hasn't lost this weekend. Seattle upset. Number two overall seed, Goat and pool play, took down Sub-Zero and then beat Machine in the quarterfinals, taking down the Chicago team before beating Boston in the semis to arrive in the finals. With this D line on the field right now for San Francisco, Mike Payne already knew when he left the stadium last night that he was going to play some of his smaller defenders because in their game yesterday against uh -huh. Denver, there were big matchups. I mean, you think about Jimmy Mickle, for instance, a guy who's taller than six feet, but he said that's not as much the case for Seattle Sockeye, and that plays into the hands of Revolver because of their excellent depth and the way they build their team. But you look up and down, you know, Revolver's, uh, Johnny Bravo's roster, some of the offensive studs are bigger guys, Bart Watson and Jimmy Mickle and Ryan Farrell. Along with guys like, you know, Tim Morrissey. And they're just a tall team. So some of the shorter, quicker defenders weren't on the field quite as much. Mike Payne was excited to have some more of that speed in the matchup with Seattle. Looks like Mac Taylor's guarding Matt Raider again. Mishandled disc, Phil Murray. And right into his gut, and that flies out of bounds to the home sideline. Didn't go to Taylor on the upline cut, but Sam Canner shoots it deep. The wind helped keep that out of the end zone. As these teams try and figure out what to do, that's going to be a crucial part of it. This is a wind blowing south to north in a field that plays right now. The disc is going to be going east to west if it indeed does change hands. And that's the way the wind has been blowing all day. Yesterday it was oh, the opposite. Wow. And I don't know how much of the women's or mixed games that these two teams saw, but they're going to have to start playing with the wind rather quickly to avoid a bunch of turns. I haven't said anything. Right. We don't know. Uh, one with the foul. It was when Tim had the disc. One throw back. All right, so it's coming back in. One throw. Coming back, coming back. It's Red's disc. It's Red's disc coming back. We're coming Where? One. And let people set. Is it? Yeah. When? As in, uh, is it to the time of the throw? Is it time of the catch? For, just so they know. Time of the catch. Time of the catch. Where you were when he caught it? The catch. Where you were when he caught it? Reset. All right, so Revolver will get the disc back. That was Wally Kwong, one of the observers, making the call with a little bit of assistance from head observer Mitch Dangler. Careless mistake with the disc. Sam Canner just didn't secure the catch.
Tough D from Tim Gilligan. Foul call. That's turf, but a foul call. So if I do okay. this, when you move across and then you switch right motion. Nate Castine had a are huge we, game okay. yesterday. Are, are we gonna are we gonna play contest or are we gonna come here? Okay. I feel by definition the pivot and the windup is not part the of the entire thing. Like he started yeah. and never finished the contest. My ruling is not a foul. It's a turnover. Oh, 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 oh. It's hey, a freeze, guys, and check this. Freeze. This we restart with a check. Yep, it's gonna be over where it stopped. So you stay here. Trevin, we see there no right, physical right. contact allowed. Why do you say that's not a foul? This is not. Well, what Mitch Pinter was saying was there may have been a foul on the pivot, but he didn't call that. He called a foul on the throw. And while he may have been off balance because of the contact from the pivot, the ruling no foul. And Revolver, another chance for a break. Of course, they need to go the length of the field upwind. Gilligan had Taylor for the dump, and now goes long upfield as this one hangs with the wind. One on one turns into an out of bounds disc. Patrick Bayless, his intended recipient, that ended up on the track and field portion of the stadium. You know, in flight, it looked like a, a decent desperation huck. The wind is not just blowing downfield, it's also starting to blow diagonally across the field from near to far, and you can see that disc just pushed from the sideline to the track. Here's a deep shot, somewhat of a punt, falls incomplete. Again, looking for Raider one on three. Mac Taylor checks it in for San Francisco Revolver. Looking downfield again, and the wind plays into uh, Seattle's hands. Phil Murray gets a deep. Raider goes down to get it. You wonder how long they'll continue hucking. Buckeyes offense becoming a little stagnant. Players behind the disc, they need to keep their feet moving. Beautiful dump swing. They move it around the edge. Raider keeps his feet in. And after a long point, the pole went to Seattle and they do even it up at two. Well, there wasn't great downfield cutting, so what do you do? Look for the dump swing. Good solid handler cuts, excellent timing as well. And a nice backhand to the front cone, Raider makes the easy catch. It was an injury plague season for Seattle Sockeye. You look at the performance of the pro flight finale, they only won two games and a surprising run a little bit considering the struggles in the pro flight finale, but behind guys like Raider, the leadership of Karlinski, Kinley, and Spencer Wallace. They have had a fantastic run through the national championships. Certainly one of the top brands in Ultimate Seattle Sockeye. For so many years, it was either Seattle Sockeye or Vancouver's Furious George. Those two cities, one from just north of the border and the other in the Pacific Northwest, great rivals in ultimate. Kittredge looking for the huck. And it plays right into the hands of Revolver. Josh Wiseman makes the catch. Looks like he gets up okay after some contact. What a flick huck there. Well, this is a really tough throw because it's with the wind, and if you put too much on it, it will just sail out the back. But a good angle to it enables Wiseman to come down with the disc. Josh Wiseman, an original member of this Revolver team that was founded in 2006, another Stamford alum. And basically, he gets clotheslined as he comes down with the goal. 
Bo Kittredge now has all three assists for San Francisco. They take a 3-2 lead as they set to pull. We talked about this a little bit last night late in the win over Denver's Johnny Bravo was that that was a way that Kittredge was utilized for the World Games team is that when other op opponents didn't want him going deep, He's perfectly content with staying under and playing a different role for the offense. And for the first time today, Mike Payne is going to have Bo Kittredge on the field for a defensive point. Not only is he on the field, but he's going to pull. Bo Kittredge to the pull for this is not a common thing for Revolver. You know, Bo Kittredge is probably the most athletic guy on the field whenever he plays, but typically Revolver just use him on offense. And that landed out of bounds. The last pull in this game only went about 40, 30, 45 yards because of the wind. So they're hoping to slice the blade through the wind and maybe have it roll down into the corner. That's the type of pull that you might see when the score is 14 to five and there's only one point left. Not when it's three, two and a pivotal point coming, but a turnover with great field position. Seattle can't capitalize. Chance for a break. Mac Taylor looking for Kittredge downfield. He reads it well, bobbles and catches. Two yards out, Revolver finishes the point, but a travel called and a throw to the end zone from Lucas Dahlman. We'll take a look at the highlight in a second, but that was such an intelligent read by Kittredge. You know, we've seen this wind Confuse receivers all game long, but Bo is going to backpedal in the perfect position where only he could make the play. And he tips it to himself. That wasn't intentional, Mike. I don't think, but he's still able to haul it in after the short bobble. Dump swing could be big here. A lot of traffic, and he forced it through. Dalman impatient, Taylor Leahy was who he was looking for. And so the great oh, catch man. by Kittredge goes for not in a turn. And you know, I've really been impressed by Lucas Dalman this year, one of the rookies on this Revolver team in 2013. A defensive stud, runs really, really hard, typically makes smarter decisions than that. Raider went up for it, it sailed right over him. Mac Taylor's presence forced him to go up before he wanted to in the wind. Again, wreaked havoc. Looking for Dahlman. He's going to have to make a similar play to Kittredge, and he does. And Dahlman calls timeout. Understanding the situation here, chance for a break for San Francisco, and after a turnover on their last possession on the goal line, it's a smart decision. Nice read here by Dahlman. Doesn't have the size of somebody like Kittredge, but at five foot 11, the San Francisco State product, able to bring it in. He's played mixed the past couple of years. His first year bidding for a championship in the men's division. Revolver will talk this over on the goal line. The number one seed coming into the tournament, a bit of a daunting challenge in the pre-quarters. Furious George to not have a showcase season, but with a legacy that the Vancouver team brings, they're always dangerous. Sub-Zero was competitive in the quarterfinals, but Revolver was always in control. And then you know, just a tremendous game yesterday against Johnny Bravo. A few too many mistakes from the Denver team. Revolver typically doesn't make too many mistakes. Kittredge is going to be in the front of the stack here, looks like they're gonna to try to isolate him. The offense sets, and then the defense has 20 seconds to align. We'll see if the defense tries to poach away to try to sandwich Kittredge a little bit. Keep in mind as the sun sets here, that Revolver is looking into the sun. The cutters. Kittredge right in the middle. He found the seam in the zone and helps Revolver get a break. That was a secondary move from Kittredge. Doesn't get the disc his first move. The attention goes elsewhere. He finds the pocket. 
and his hands are as sure as anyone's. Bo Kittredge from Alaska, and he is a marvelous athlete. It's amazing how understated he is for how dominant he is. But he's used to winning. He's also endured some tough losses in his day. Talked about that after the game yesterday. Death or Glory from Boston won Watching six straight Victor. championships. Yeah, I mean, well, on, the, on that one, I was running Yeah, off. you just weren't there yet? Yeah. Okay. Revolver, born in 2006. 20 seconds. Jam was with a great San Francisco team before then. Ten seconds. Bo Kittredge going to play another defensive point here. What kind of message is Mike Payne trying to send with this? Downwind point. If we get a D, we'll probably get the score. And when we get the D, I want Kittredge out there. He'll try the blady pull again. That will roll out of bounds. And what that does, not great field position for Sakai, and it allows San Francisco to set the defense. And it will be the disc on the sideline because it rolled out of bounds. So we'll see if San Francisco puts a trap on right out of the gate. Seventy yards from the front of one end zone to the other. That's the playing field proper with 20 yard end zones on each end. Field slightly narrower than a football field, 40 yards wide. Pick called. Pick called. On the mark, Bo Kittredge. The disc in the hands of Nate Castine. A great poach defensively from one of the handler defenders. So this is the D San Francisco was looking for. That was Russell Wynn with that D. Revolver can go up a couple breaks. You know, for a moment, there was a ton of clogging on the fourth side. San Francisco cleared away quickly to create space. Bobble and a catch. Russell win. Book ends the play, the D, and the goal for San Francisco. Well, as Revolver celebrates, Seattle Sockeyes walking down the field and the players on the sidelines trying to fire up Seattle to keep the energy going because right now Seattle precariously sits in a spot where Revolver could roll. Bo Kittredge, he's such a dynamic player but Revolver uses him more of as a role player and he does the little things well. A great example of Revolver's patient offense Against the zone defense, when you get that close to the end zone, it's hard for that zone to be effective. Sockeye he reads the disc out. as well as anybody. That's and he doesn't give up on the play. Beaufort Kittredge, he played collegiately with Colorado Mama Bird. Comes from a sprinting background. He wanted to run track at Colorado, and he went to the coach and the coach basically said no, and Bo's challenge was, well, get your fastest sprinter. <laughs> Let's get in the field and race, and my money would be on Bo. I'd love to go back to that coach and see why the answer is no. We put a lid on the USA Ultimate National Championships here with the men's final, and some of the great Ultimate Hall of Famers we've talked to to talk about the growth from five teams now to 48 here this year, a change of venue from Sarasota, Florida to beautiful Frisco, Texas, and the last leg in the first year of the Triple Crown Tour. And Revolver, as they lead 5-2 here, has a chance to complete the trifecta, U.S. Open Championship, regular season championship, and this would be the third and final leg. It's been a tremendous season for Mike Payne's team. Mike Payne himself, a former player. Now calculating strategy on the sideline. Mike Payne was a captain of this team in 2009. Nick Schlag, one of the current captains, uh, captains, describes Mike's playing style, very composed, incredibly confident in his abilities. Yeah. 
I think this entire Revolver team has been motivated by the championship game from last year when they lost to double wide. One of the guys on that double wide team standing opposite Revolver again today, that's Tim Garrett, the former Florida star who's played for Seattle and double wide, also a team out of Gainesville, Florida called Vicious Cycle back in the mid 2000s. It's not panic time yet for Seattle. But they need to capitalize better than this. Raiders throw goes awry. And a turn for Seattle. He had plenty of time and all day to throw with no mark coming up. Yeah, Joe Sefton just broke off his cut, changed direction right when the throw was released. And we're seeing, yes, uh, we're seeing, Mike, what we didn't see at all yesterday. Seattle was so efficient, didn't make any mistakes. Kittredge is trying an upwind huck, and it just doesn't have enough. Looking for Patrick Bayless right at the goal line. Weren't sure whether we would see Cassidy Rasmussen today. Did not play in the semifinals yesterday, but one of the captains, one of the steadier handlers. Again, you can't boil this revolver team down to just a couple guys. Mike Payne was really proud of how some of the younger role players deliver the goods in pool play, allowing some of the studs to rest a little bit more. He told us after the game yesterday that was one of the keys to their win against Denver was that during the season they were willing to sacrifice wins, although they didn't have to sacrifice very many because of their overall talent level, but that's what helps them win on the biggest stages. Another drop from Joe Sefton. Foul called, no contest. Phil Murray on the mark. Here's Chris Kasednar, 26-year-old. Like Bo Kittredge, he grew up in Alaska. Bo's from Fairbanks, Kasedner's from Anchorage. Kasedner played at Carleton, won a national championship in the college ranks in 09. Both of these teams will be headed to Worlds in Italy next year. And also for those interested in the two teams that lost yesterday, Sockeye with a win over Boston Ironside, Revolver defeating Denver Johnny Bravo. Ironside from Boston picked up a 15-11 win, so they're on to the World Club Championships as well. That's a big win for Boston and a tough game to play. You know, nobody wants to be in the third place game. But Josh McCarthy, one of the finer coaches in the sport, able to Regroup his team to get that win today. And a game that I'm sure would have been great to watch. That's an uncharacteristic turnover for a revolver handler set. Kasetner with a turn. And Kittredge picking up the disc. Oh. Word coming up from the hey, field that TMF has call? been called on Sakai for aggressive marking. Team misconduct foul against Seattle. I just think it's fascinating that Bo picked the disc up on the goal line there. When he was in college, not likely he would have been that guy. Turns it over again. He would have relied on perhaps Adam Chicken Simon to pick up the disc. Now a defensive handler for Seattle Sockeye, former revolver player. Adam Simon also played for Boston's Ironside, went to Worlds with both Revolver and Boston. Uh, excuse me, with Boston and Sockeye. What do you at? What do you at? Right. Coming in one. Coming in one. Kittredge will tap it in after a travel called on the turn. Get out. Get out. 
Already at TMF. Called on Seattle. Another aggressive mark there from Adam Holt. Sometimes when things aren't going well as a team, you sort of commit to being more aggressive. There's a fine line between more aggressive and dirty. I don't think Seattle's been dirty yet, but just trying to get a little physical. Maybe that gets Revolver off its game. There's a nice recovery. Great layout grab by Patrick Bayless. Travel calls. Tom James with the disc for Revolver. Foul. Greenwood, you're open. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Where are you at? Coming in seven. Okay. Coming in seven. Coming in seven. Coming in seven. Kittredge trying to break the mark. Leaves it back about 10 yards. And that's another turn. This has been an ugly point. Let's say that again. Again, Kittredge picks up the disc following the turn. Revolver just continues to punt it deep. Seattle's going downwind. Seattle's offense has been disappointing compared to what we saw yesterday. Roger Crafts, the head coach, needs to get his team to just settle down and take what's there. Sefton able to hit Michael Caldwell, who's the longest tenured player on Sockeye. He's been wearing number 20 the whole time. Originally from Minneapolis, where he was involved in gymnastics in high school, but started playing ultimate. Played a bunch of years at Carleton. Mainstay on this Sockeye team was part of all three championship teams, 04, 06, and 07. At this point, the increasing number of turns that have taken place, no substitutions. Of course, you can't sub unless it's after a score or on an injury timeout. So it's a fatiguing point as well. the disc, Tom James the mark. And Sakai is finally able to end the point. Joe Sefton gets the score for Seattle as they pulled it within 5-3, ending a marathon possession. It was much more important for Seattle to get this point than it was for Revolver. Down win, nice footwork from Sefton, but frankly, it's about time. That point should have been scored three or four turnovers ago. Even on those short throws there, that pass to Sefton took a little bit of a rise. The wind is wreaking havoc on throws long and short, but the Hucks in particular have been unsuccessful. Yeah, even the short throws are getting popped around a little bit. Nothing compared to what we've seen in some of the past years down in Sarasota right by the water. So the defensive line here for Seattle. A tall task. Bo Kittredge 
as you might expect, still out there for the offensive point. Reed Koss is going to pull. That was about as long as a point as we've seen today. Some long ones in the women's final as well between Fury and Scandal with Washington, D.C. ultimately coming out on top. And now here on this possession for San Francisco, they face a cup of zone defense from Seattle. Back to Says a lot about how far Bo has come, that they're using him as a handler in the offensive set against the zone. Waved off. The they waved off the travel. Disc stays with a far side handler in the continuation. Nick Schlag gets it in, Ashlyn Joy. That throw can't get through the cup if it's going to be successful. Kittred sits, allows the zone defense to reset. And that's exactly what Seattle wanted. They get the turn, the D from Matt Sewell. Matt Sewell Skip Sewell, very active hands. The second most veteran member of the Sockeye team. But even before we can finish the replay, Seattle gives it away. That's unbelievable. We'll Kittredge right now looking to see how close the defenders are because I think he's calling for a double team. Okay. <laughs> All right. so. Only one defender can be within 10 feet of the disc. If you double team the disc, that is a violation. Sometimes the cup encloses too close. Another great D. Seattle's forcing Revolver to make some mistakes. Sam Harkness, Sam Harkness forces the turn, and you see as he comes down, he gets hit. And it's the mid-air collision. It looks like it got him. Harkness has been a long time top player. Back in 2004, he went to Finland for Youth Worlds, representing the United States. So as he comes out, Tyler Kinley is his replacement on the injury Tyler substitution. The Mac Taylor comes in on the revolver side, replacing Evan Boucher. Both teams entitled to the substitution on the injury timeout. can only substitute after a point or when there's an injury. Remember, a score here would be a break for Seattle. Layout try by Tyler Kinley, and he hangs on. A game-changing effort here from Kinley. One of the three captains for Sakai. Putting his body on the line, an SC Top 10 nominee. Now, we saw Bo Kittredge yesterday. We nominated him for Sports Center, but I think Tyler Kinley takes the cake with his layout grab. You don't often see the two-handed layout catch like that, but he wanted to make sure that when he got his fingers on it, he would hang on. Tyler Kinley grew up in Michigan. Moved, moved out to Seattle, joined Sakai. Really nice throw by Reed Koss into the wind. Helps this disc float a little bit. And you can see the neck snap back on the landing. Kinley a little dazed, but it feels much better to 
Get drilled like that when you made the play, that's for sure. Tim Garrett to pull. Sakai D is his zone again. And when you've got to credit Seattle here, going down now a couple of breaks. That hammer breaks the cup, but Seattle has hung with it. Still want to be chill when you break through that cup. Ashland Joy tried to crash into that cup to get a quick throw. Created some space. The downfield spacing from an offensive perspective is super important too. You want to try to find gaps for the over the top throws. That's beautifully done. Slog breaks through the middle and Wiseman helps to punch it home for Revolver. John Wiseman into the end zone for Evan Boucher and the Revolver score. That's Revolver Evan Boucher in the right spot in the end zone to receive Wiseman's quick backhand. Well, the zone defense for Seattle has done one thing. It slowed down the pace of this game. You know, Revolver man-to-man -man basically proved offensively that they're not going to make too many mistakes. There are times the zone defense is going to get beaten, like we saw on the second or third point. But Seattle has stuck with it, believing that eventually it will force San Francisco into situations in which it's not as comfortable in compared to the man-to-man -man set. And what has been the philosophy that we've heard from those teams that have remained at the elite level of this game for so long is that even when things don't go their way, they stay true to what they've planned on heading into that game, whatever their philosophy may be, because they believe ultimately that'll help them be successful. Success does breed success, but you know today the theme has been somewhat the changing of the guard. In the mixed division, a team like the Polar Bears in the finals for the fourth straight year, but lost. This is the second offsides call on Offense, Revolver. No, no, at midfield. At midfield. It's, a, it's a really, no, Offense, you have 30 it's the whole line. line. Yeah, Offense, yeah. Have that's what we said in the captain's set. meeting. It's at the 50. No, it's it's a check. It's like it's, it's like you're coming out of a timeout. Twenty to set off. So the disc set. will be at midfield. After the second the offsides outside. of the first half, just a careless mistake. You can hear Mitch telling Bo, the observer telling the Revolver Star that it's the full yellow line, not just the white line, that you have to stay behind. The full yellow outline to be onside. Really good handler defense there by Ashland Joy. Cut off the angle that the thrower had to his dump, Adam Holt. And now Raider marked by Mac Taylor. Forces backhand, a quick dump off to his left to Kassedner. That's just picked up by Phil Murray, who keeps it from hitting the turf. Sakai looking for a score all alone, and Seattle is within one. Challenge, but they have not faded here in the first half. It's a tough throw over traffic. Bounced over Ashland Joy, and 
The catch made by Adam Holt for Seattle Sockeye in the back corner of the end zone. And when the wind is playing tricks with the disc, I can understand Holt's reluctance to attack that, but you also give the wind opportunity to either drill that disc in the ground or perhaps pop it over his head, fortunately for Seattle, right in his grasp. So that's a big break for Sakai. San Francisco trying to win its third title in the last four years. Revolver champions in 2010 and 2011. Sakai, last one in 2007. So if an upset by seed here were to happen for Seattle, it wouldn't be our biggest of the day. But it would be, yet again, the underdog coming out on top here on Championship Sunday. And I think it says a lot about San Francisco Fury in the women's division that no matter what happens here, I'll consider the biggest upset of the day, Washington, D.C. scandal. Even though that was a three seed beating a one compared to the mix, which was an eight over a two, this would be a seven over a one. And that's just how large a gap there's been in the women's game with Fury at the top of the mountain, dethroned today. Plenty of revolver players at the end zone. Nobody's able to come up with it. Looks like there's a dispute, though, there down at the goal line. Joel Schlockett was jumping to get it. I hit his hand. I thought it was gone. He straddles up with Reed Koss. I thought it was gone. I don't know if I can touch or you want to come here? I thought it was what you wanted. Yeah. Really? Was a foul? Come here. Come on. Oh, oh, Definitive oh, call oh, made by oh, head observer Mitch Dingley. And that put Revolver in an easiest spot as they probably found themselves all weekend. And Kittredge finishes off the point after the foul to make it 7 5 San Francisco. And the Revolver scores. Revolver little lefty backhand flip right there. It amazes me how some of these top players have developed the confidence on a windy day in a championship game to just take that lefty backhand. And that was what Sandy Jurgensen did at the end of the women's final as well. She went left-handed just for convenience sake. Well, she's a lefty, to finish it off. She's a lefty. Most throwers aren't. Just bringing you a similarity there. I don't appreciate, you know, left-handed throwers, you, you expect to throw lefty, but when a right-handed handler just drops in a little high-release lefty backhand, that's what's really impressive. And again, Kittredge is going to pull here on a defensive line with Tom James and Russell Wynn. Ashland Joy playing a defensive point to try to take this to halftime as well. Looks like Mac Taylor is out there as well. Taylor Leahy. Oh, Martin Cochran who won the Farriker Award last year. Bo Kittredge winning it this year. Hey, aesthetically speaking, that is not a beautiful pull from Kittredge, but with this wind, it gets the job done. Chance for Revolver to get a break and take half here. Whenever the disc ends up in Kittredge's hands, the sideline cries, no huck. They don't want him to throw it deep. Difficulty for the handlers right and now as well. They're going toward the west end zone, looking right into the sun. Right around the mark. Oh, 
Wayne up ahead to Cochran. Taylor's got the flick. Dumps back for Kittredge. To the goal line, revolver score, Russell win. San Francisco, the higher seed, takes half, 8-5. Those couple of breaks prove big. Sakai zone, able to thwart a couple revolver possessions, but the higher seed takes half. And again, Kittredge, who really wouldn't have been considered a handler very much over the course of his prestigious career, doing an unbelievable job in the championship game. It's like in Rocky too when he came out and fought Apollo Creed right-handed. And he was a lefty, but Rocky went right-handed. And then somewhere in the middle of the, of the, of the fight, he switched back to Southpaw. I mean, this is what Revolver's doing. Their, their greatest deep weapon, they're using as a handler. They may not need him to go deep, but if they do at some point in the second half, that big haymaker's gonna come. Eight goals for San Francisco in the first half, and Kittredge with an assist on four of them, helping to lead the charge. His revolver looks to become champions again for the third time in four years. Fighting their way up into the pro fight for 2014, our Johnny Bravo and Sonicero. That's going to be an uphill climb for Seattle in the second half. We're going to throw a headset on Roger Crafts here, the head coach for Sakai and get his thoughts on an 8-5 score here. Roger, uh, what do you make of this first half for your team? Uh, you know, we've, we're getting away from what we do a little bit. Um, just got to get back to the basis that we've been working on all season. How much of the offensive struggles do you attribute to the wind, and how much is it that you're just not in the same sync and rhythm that you were in yesterday? I think the wind will throw off that rhythm a little bit, um, nerves a little bit, but we'll get back into it. You throw in the cup at San Francisco. Has it done what you wanted? Not quite yet, but getting there. Will you stay with it in the second half? Perhaps. All right, Roger, thanks, and good luck in the second half. Thanks. Well, we'll have to wait and see what the strategy will be for Sakai. We'll talk more about it when we come back. 8-5, San Francisco. A couple of breaks, the difference right now at the half here in Frisco, San Francisco, leading Seattle 8-5 at the break in this men's final of the 2013 USA Ultimate National Championship. Seven Lepler, Mike Cousins, well, Roger Kraft, the head coach of Seattle Sockeye, a man of few words as we talked to him to try and pick his brain a little bit. And so we don't know if they're going to stick with the cup, but Seattle's got to change up something if they want to be able to come back and make this a game. Well, understandably, Roger Kraft's not in a great mood right now because his team is making mistakes that it hasn't made all weekend long. You don't go undefeated in pool play, defeating teams like Sub-Zero and GOAT by making the mistakes that they've made today. Revolver hasn't had to do that much defensively. I mean, has Revolver had any real spectacular deeds in the first half? Most spectacular play was probably from Seattle, Tyler Kinley's great layout score in the end zone even that upwind score didn't really get Seattle going like they hoped it would and Revolver able to take half 8-5. What Revolver has been able to do is continue with its team concept as they got the scoring started and Bo Kittredge with four first half assists on their eight goals everybody has played a part in their in their offense today. The story for Revolver is they've used Bo Kittredge as a handler He's primarily thrown underneath, but he's had some deep shots too. This is the one deep opportunity that Kittredge read the disc beautifully, made the play out of a timeout. They isolated their star in the end zone for another score. Seattle Sockeye with a great deep shot from Matt Rader, the guy we highlighted off the top. He's been with Seattle for six years, and he's trying to get him back to a championship. Here comes the Tyler Kinley catch. He keeps going and going and paws it in. Shaking up on the play a little bit too, but the story of the first half revolver and their ability to capitalize on opportunities, a few sloppy points as well, but San Francisco, an 8-5 lead, seven points away from the third title in four years for San Fran. Trying to get the first title today on Championship Sunday for a team from San Francisco. 8-5 is the lead right now for San Francisco. 
And Mike Payne, the head coach, joins us down on the sideline. Uh, Mike, a nice first half for you, getting out to this 8-5 lead. Uh, what do you think has been the most important part in getting a three-goal advantage? Well, I mean, I think that uh, what we talked about yesterday, Evan, is uh, that we have a lot of depth on defense. We played a couple of really tight points with them early on where there are multiple turns. You know, in this win, there's going to be some messiness uh, regardless. And I think that tired their O team a little bit, uh, a little bit out, and we really applied a lot of pressure uh, going into the end of that half, so we got another uh, break at the end. Mike, we have to ask you, what went into the decision to primarily use Bo Kittredge as a handler? <laughs> Bo, uh, to some degree, does what Bo wants. Um, but the nice thing about Bo being a handler is that he's a big body back there. And in windy situations like this, he's a big target. And it's hard to get around him for a defender to lay out. So in general, he takes care of the disc very well as a handler. Uh, and then when he flashes downfield, he's a big target. So it's a strategy that uh, he actually implemented without us asking him, but it's working real well. <laughs> Mike, we appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good one. Mike Payne, head coach of San Francisco Revolver. He's the coach, but sometimes Bo does what Bo wants. Bo's team up in front, 8-5. San Francisco halfway to a title, taking half 8-5 against Seattle Sockeye. And Evan, here's a look at our scoring summary from the first half of play here in Frisco. Well, San Francisco prides themselves on their balance. The thing that stands out, the four assists from Bo Kittredge. Really interesting comment from Mike Payne saying that basically it was Bo's idea to be a handler, but it's been very effective. So as the head coach, he doesn't really have much negative to say about it. Boucher, Wynn, and Kittredge all with two goals for Seattle. Matt Rader, the guy we highlighted off the top, has gotten the end zone twice. They're going to need more production from him in the second half. And that second half comes your way next. On a windy day in Frisco, Texas, San Francisco takes half 8-5 over Seattle Sockeye. Revolver in front. Yesterday, Revolver took down Denver's Johnny Bravo, 15-11, and Sockeye with a win over Boston Ironside. Consolation for Ironside is they did pick up a win over Johnny Bravo, 15-11, in that third place game for a trip to the World Club Championships. And Mac Taylor Mac pulls Taylor for San Francisco over. Revolver to get the second half underway in our final game here on Championship Sunday in the 2013 USA Ultimate National Championships. Those were two interesting halftime interviews we had with the coaches. Roger Crafts of Sockeye basically not wanting to give anything away, clearly a little frustrated with how his team is playing. And Mike Payne give us the quote of the day. Bo does what Bo wants. Bo wins, usually. There's a nice lefty scuba. Very quick downfield action for Seattle. And they strike in a hurry. Chris Kasedner gets the point. That's the best offensive drive that either team has shown in this game. He's jammed it up the sideline. Joe Sefton set a pivot foot back to back scubers. Because Sedner with a score. Guarded by Alex Brammer. Guarding the mark. Brammer, the guy we declared yesterday to have the best beard in Ultimate. Because Sedner, clean shaven. One goal, one assist so far today, makes it 8-6. Regardless of whoever ends up with the championship trophy, I don't think that anybody's going to challenge Alex Brammer. Maybe by next year. <laughs> Maybe he's been growing it the last year in anticipation of this tournament. 
Some of his teammates, it might take a year to grow one like that. Again, Kittredge still being used as a handler. And a nice poach from his college teammate. That was Adam Simon, who threw it deep to Kittredge so often when they were teammates with Mama Bird. He came from the far side handler. A diagonal layup for the D. Nice grab and a bullet backhand. Pulled in by Tim Garrett. Simon again. Chicken puts it up in the end zone. It's deed away. Josh Wiseman. With a D in the Josh end Wiseman. Big time layout D. Much more conservative possession here. He caught it, but he was not in the end zone. And they're on a streak from the back end. Ashland Joy helps San Francisco get the break and go out 9-6. On the San Francisco offense, able to hold after turning it over once. Wiseman with a great D in the end zone. Took a while for Nathan White to find somebody, but 28 to 27. Ashlyn Joy has been involved in the offense throughout the weekend. Take a look at this defensive line for San Francisco. Tom James, number three, Andrew Hagan, 21. Patrick Bayless, Tim Gilligan. Mac Taylor on the right side, number 40, with Zach Travis. Russell Wynn also out there. Offense, Sefton Karlinski. Michael Caldwell, the veteran. Chris Kasedner. The deep threat, Matt Rader. Tim Gilligan to Paul Murray Walker. And Phil Murray. Gilligan pulls now. It had been Kittredge for majority of the first half. And that whirls out of bounds. Serving in the other, rather pulling in the other direction. Out of bounds on that pull. It's just a little three-handler weave that Seattle's oh. running. The four cutters in a quasi-horizontal stack down the field aren't even involved. They're just giving the handlers space to go to work. No contest. A little three-handler weave. Up and back cuts, slash cuts. So far, they haven't even looked downfield. Hey, guys, if there's no grabbing, you're just going for the same space. It's not a foul. I, I, I thought he put it down. OK, that's fair. All right, foul contest. Let's go, Russ. After a contested foul, now a pick. And that has really stagnated the Seattle offense. Pick doesn't affect. 
had no chance of getting on this is where the observer needs to take charge more quickly. This is a play that really doesn't influence any aspect of the game. We're at one. Bill Murray with the dish for Sakai. San Francisco leading 9-6 here in the second half. Men's championship on the line here at the USA Ultimate National Championship. A long wait for Seattle Sockeye. They do find pay dirt. It's Michael Caldwell. Well, this is uh, offensive possession reminiscent to yesterday. High release lefty backhand for Sefton, and then Caldwell patient around the goal line. This possession just started with Handler cut to work it down the field. And an angled backhand to hit the 37-year-old senior member of Sockeye, Michael Caldwell. It's going to take more than that, though, for Seattle to make it a comeback against San Francisco. They're going to need breaks. Now, as they get set to pull and go on defense, what will they show here against San Francisco? They'll show aggressiveness and energy. Caldwell's having some fun after scoring that point. Looks like Reed Koss is going to pull for Seattle. Second team misconduct foul for Revolver, so the next one would be a significant penalty. Excessive Reed marking the reason the for the TMF. And Revolver has already been called offside twice on poles as well. Now in this offensive point, Bo Kittredge lines up in the horizontal stack across the field. Wow. Joel Schlackett with the disc. Ashlyn Joy, the closest handler to him. Nick Schlag, the third handler. Nice job to move the disc across the field to Jordan Jeffrey. They go deep downfield. Two revolver players there, but it falls. Revolver third. An uphill, upwind challenge here for Seattle. Ashland Joy on the mark. With a chance to get back within one. Okay, coming on one. Defense, whenever you're ready, tap it in. Ashland Joy marking Jacob Spidell, who had some cramping uh, issues yesterday in the semi against Boston. Back out there today. Koss, hucking deep. Back-to-back -back hucks falling incomplete for San Francisco right, and Seattle. Joy to you can just see the jerseys moving in the wind on the close shots. Ashland Joy unleashes Kittredge and Koss. And cleaning up the trash. Back side of the play, Joel Schlock into Bo Kittredge. Not the way they drew it up, but it's picture perfect. In terms of a result, it absolutely is. Joel Schlackett deserves all the credit here. Joel with he an never end. gave up on the disc. This was a punt more than anything, but sometimes you get lucky. Left hand under the disc, that was certainly up. Kittredge has made a significant impact on this game. 
Eight goals for San Francisco in the first half. He had an assist on four of them, and that goal is his third. Say his name a lot, but it's hard not to for a player with his skill set and dominance. Uh oh, great ultimate player. What does he do in his spare time? What's his job, you might ask? Well, he's an author and an illustrator of children's books. He'll appreciate the plug. You can check it out at bowsbooks.com. Pull coming from Taylor. Remember, Revolver's got to be careful here. Already two offsides called against San Francisco today. That disc going to stay in bounds. What a nice pull into the wind. Seattle was reluctant to try to catch it in the air because of a last minute movement. It could drop. Garrett streaking deep. Beg your pardon, that was Karlinski. Now a beautiful pull. No pressure there really from San Francisco. Sets up a turn in the end zone. Just a casual drop by Kasednar. Taylor's got Kittridge in front of him and both has now scored four times. Taylor One of his books is called unbroken. He's unguardable in that situation. It's a nice little quick open side cut. Used his body to gain position against Nate Kestine. I mean, you made a comparison before Championship Sunday got underway with Revolver from San Francisco and the San Antonio Spurs and Bo Kittredge basically being the, Kim, the Tim Duncan of that team. Well, you know, I, I was joking about that, and, you know, he's... I, I compared him to the Spurs just because they're super consistent, and, you know, they don't rely on one guy. They're a full team. They have a, a, a calm, calculating coach on the sidelines, although Mike Payne's more articulate than Greg Popovich. But the reality is Bo Kittredge is LeBron James. I mean, he's in a league of his own. The Spurs did not win the championship this year. The Miami Heat did, and that's because LeBron James is the best in the world at what he does. Bo Kittredge has not always been the complete package, but similar to LeBron James, he's crafted his game. Now one had to work on his outside shot, and the other here in front of us today working on his handling skills, which have proven to be rather adept. Bo made a decision to move to San Francisco, left Johnny Bravo. They weren't burning his Johnny Bravo jersey in the street. But they did take oh, down the giant Kittredge poster that was hanging in downtown Denver. Probably. Here's another bow pull. A blady flick. What's the call here? I uh, didn't hold your line. He walked around uh, behind. Oh, it's a repo. Off -sensitive, uh, offensive offsides call. You hardly ever see that. On offense, the Soccer receiving team needs to stay on the line throughout the pull. Otherwise, it's called an offensive offside. And you know, we did college nationals in the U.S. Open and the national championships on ESPN here in 2013. That's the first offensive offside we've seen. So Bo will have another chance. Back in July, I was chatting with one of the more prominent college coaches, and you know, I mentioned this on the year in Raleigh as well, but asked if Bo was you know, the best athlete in the game, and the answer was by far. And you can see why today.
It's Raider and Taylor up ahead of the play. And a pick called. Raider got bumped by Taylor and Kittredge into the contact right. hey, as well. Hey, we're coming down on three. Coming down on three. San Francisco up 11-7 in the second half. We are now just about six minutes away from the soft cap going on. And that's played a factor in the other two championship games earlier today as well. Pick called, I believe, before the throw, so this will go back. <coughs> yeah, it's it's going to definitely going. Danny Karlinski yep. ran his defender, Sam Canner. Hey, we're coming in six. Through the duo right next to him. Castine the disc, Kittredge on the mark on the restart. Karlinski to the doorstep, and Seattle gets the score. It was Raider. He shook the mark of Mac Taylor, and it's 11 8. Seattle offense is starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. This is an upwind point. Karlinski patient, nice little slash cut from Castine, and then Raider, as he often is, wide open in the end zone. Seattle's in a spot right now, though, still down by three. A downwind break would only be the first step to a comeback. At half, San Francisco led 8-5. The story has been Bo Kittredge today. Four goals and four assists. His hand in all but three of those revolver goals. As San Francisco today looks to complete the sweep of the inaugural Triple Crown Tour, winning the U.S. Open in early July in Raleigh, North Carolina, the regular season as well. And now just four goals away from taking this USA Ultimate National Championship. And if we included hockey assists on that graphic, Bo would have even more of an impact. Remember the, the great bobbling catch he made near the goal line, he passed it once parallel, which led to the throw for the score. Wiseman through the middle and it's dropped. Seattle going with basically a flat mark on that defensive possession. Prevented the huck and one revolver mistake. Looks like a TMF was just called. On revolver, you have a choice, you can keep it here, stall zero. We're center or you want the attacking brick? Attacking brick center here, stay here. There you go. So because it's the third TMF on revolver, Seattle has the choice to bring it to the brick. That's the penalty for the team misconduct foul. It'll be Seattle's disc. The result. Freeze just like Adam Tana. 20 yards from the goal line. They call it the attacking brick. If it had been a TMF on Revolver, their third. Defense, and they were on offense, so it would be a yep. negative yardage penalty Just assessed like to San Francisco. No, he, can, he taps it. Risky throw, but it worked out. Harkness, a nice grab. Tapped out of bounds. Nice job there. Nathan White was part of the turn for Revolver and makes the D to send it back to San Francisco with the 11-8 lead and a minute 50 to go before the soft cap comes on. On a calm day, those little short flips without much rotation on them might work out okay, but on a windy day, those throws become exponentially more difficult. What a great defensive play by Sakai. Donnie Clark stepping in front of the throw from Sanchez. See if that'll energize Donnie Seattle. Seattle. 
Hammer attempt another turn. A tremendous D by Clark, but Garrett, an ill advised hammer. And Revolver will take a timeout oh, to regroup. During this timeout, the soft cap will be close to arriving. The time will run out, so the soft cap will go on after this point. A full look at today's schedule. First, it was Minneapolis with a win over San Francisco. The Dragon Thrust takes the title of the mixed division. An exciting win for a team that said all along, we expect not only to be in the semis, but to win it all. They came in really confident. Congrats to them, their first ever title. A similar story in the women's bracket for Washington, D.C. scandal. And what I would call the biggest upset of the day and perhaps the entire tournament. Alex Gesquier, Mike Lepresti. Uh, Lepresti lead Washington, D.C. past San Fran. Octavia Payne and Ann Mercier, Sandy Jurgensen, so vital for that scandal effort to upend the seven-time champs. The nine-time champs, the seven-time defending champs. Fury is still nine and two in championship finals. That's not bad. And here are the crowd. Many of the teams competing throughout the weekend. Enjoying their time here in Frisco, Texas. First time in 13 years the national championships have been held at a site other than down on the beach in Sarasota, Florida. But the wind has proved to be just as big a factor here inland than it would be on the shore. Nick Schlag has taken a beating today. He went down again, but good to see him pop right up. During that timeout, the soft cap went on. So if Revolver scores on this possession, it'll be a game to 14 for the men's championship. Kittredge has just been finding himself in the middle of the field, looking to get rid of it and then cutting off the throw. And his defender, Sam Harkness, had to respect the deep cut. So Bo is wide open for a 10-yard gain. Harkness had just been hanging behind him. Kittredge gets another assist as he finds a cutting Josh Wiseman to make it 12-8, game to 14. That's really easy. Well timed cut by Win. About a third of the team is new this year. I mentioned it earlier, but Mike Payne has said numerous times that during the regular season it, they would sacrifice victories to give the young, inexperienced players an opportunity to prove themselves. Mike Payne very involved in the USA board, helping to create some of the organizational bylaws. A big year for USA Ultimate. Getting provisional recognition as a possible Olympic sport from the IOC. Had a brief look at Roger Crafts. Aren't many more things that he can try. 
Revolver now two points away. Soft cap is on. Game to 14. Just let one rip. Why not? Going deep and looking for Michael Caldwell. Back of the end zone. He runs it down and hangs on to the disc. It's a big score, a nice play to run that down for Caldwell. Unfortunately for Seattle, it's only one point. Currently in ultimate, no such thing as a two or three point shot. See how fast that Caldwell was running. Doesn't look like he's lost a step at all. How many 37-year-olds year do you know with her like that? It's a bold move. Look good. Wouldn't look good on me, but looks good on him. They're giving him the Rodney Dangerfield. Looks good on you, though, huh? We'll get you a hat at the end of the day. Don't worry, a bowl of soup. Now Reed Koss will pull for Sakai. Jacob Spidell, Eric Duisberg out there on the defensive line for Sakai. Also Tim Garrett, Skip Sewell. Duisberg, six foot six, trying to be one of the point men in that cup. Flashing the wig span with Joe Sefton alongside. And ever since the half, haven't seen much of this four-man cup from Seattle. Revolver easily breaks it with a cross-field hammer. Wynn carries that back for Schlag just outside of his own end zone. And it took a long time for the cup to reset, but nobody made a play for a short pass. And now this is a really tough spot for Revolver. Trapped on the sideline and uh, somehow that disc remained up. Ashland Joy got lucky. I need to do more of crashing the cup. One of the handlers need to run in there. That was a beautiful throw. Found one little gap and that's sometimes all it takes. Kittredge tiptoes the sideline. He goes back cross field to Schlag. So quick movement here. Now in the hands of Wiseman. Revolver has not been quick enough, though, as they've allowed that cup to continually reset. Basically beating this four-man cup with two handlers and a couple poppers. It's been schlag and joy primarily, just back and forth. Still looking downfield. And it works to perfection. A lot of patience. Couple hammers, and it gets the job done for Revolver. As they move to within one point of a national championship. It's very simple. A lot of good zone offense is just being patient. Teams put the zone on because they know you want to fire it deep. But Revolver calm collected, taking care of business here in the championship game. Goal for Devin Anderson. Offense for Seattle trying to stay alive. Mac Taylor will pull. Yo Kawaoka, one of the captains. Taylor Leahy, Lucas Dahlman. John Levy, one of the Barry leaders Taylor of the D-line. Tom Walker. James. And Martin Cochran. The offense resting up. 
the defense a chance to make everybody champions wearing red. Miscommunication there defensively. Phil Murray was left wide open. Finally, Dahlman comes over to pick him up. Near turn by Sakai. They look to keep their lives here in this game. Chris Kassetner oh. with the disc and a foul called upfield. Foul called, no oh, contest, no. just to the left of the mark. Conce no contest? Coming on zero. Get on zero, let's shape! Coming on oh, one! Just barely able to keep that disc up. You guys set? Put in five. Come on, five. Nearing the sideline. Another big grab. Flick cock for Seattle. Grab by Raider. And the point punctuated by Castine. Chris Cassander in the end zone for Nate Castine and the Sockeye score. And Sockeye 10. Seattle's going to need to run off 13. five in a row to somehow shock the world here. The rested offensive line for Revolver getting ready for championship point. Again, the soft cap is on. Game is to 14. They won it in 2011 and 2010. From right to left, Devin Anderson, Nathan White, Jordan Jeffrey, Ashlyn Joy, Bo Kittredge, Josh Wiseman. Nate, uh, Nick Schlag was just off the screen to the left. This pull is going to Soar out the back of the end zone. The pole sails out the back of the end zone. And the Jordan for the disc play from the brick mark for Revolver. Championship point here for San Francisco. Looks like they're trying to isolate Bo in the middle of the field. Koss is on him. Carded him pretty tightly underneath. Joy forced home. Upfield, Kittredge with a sliding grab. Travel called on Bo. Bo goes to the observer, and it is a travel. He's been nabbed for that three or four times here in this game, but you can't ignore what Kittredge has done today for San Francisco. Five assists and four goals. Coming in six. On their Coming 13 six. scores. Joy from 10 yards out. Back to Schlag. Kittredge, reminiscent of his catch earlier in the game, tips it up, makes the grab on his back, goes to the end zone. And it's over. Revolver with a triple crown tour sweep and a title here in Texas.
A different route to the championship in 2013 for San Francisco Revolver. Where in the past, Bo Kittredge has been primarily a deep threat and an underneath cutter in the offense. He was the distributor in the championship game today. Leaning over to get the throw off. And winning never gets old for number 50. A 14-10 win for Mike Payne's San Francisco Revolver, their third championship for the club that was founded in 2006 in the Bay Area. That assist from Kittredge to Wiseman for the championship winning goal was the sixth of the game for Bo, along with four goals as he caps off the best performance of the weekend. You think about what it takes for San Francisco to win the Triple Crown Tour. It's endurance paired with a whole heck of a lot of ability. A lot of happiness in that huddle. Mike Payne with a big smile on his face. He's a very serious coach throughout the season, trying to gain every ounce of potential out of his team. And, and I think you could say he's done it. Let's try to listen in. Captains and coach on this I got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sick tournament by Revolver. That was full participation from everyone. Everyone carried us the entire way. Yeah, maybe more of us played in the last game, but the reason we got to that last game was the full fucking team. The <laughs> was playing really well. And that's how Revolver's so good. A lot of teams can put five players on the court, and, you know, they're going to be dead by semis. We run deep. We run so deep. So deep. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> almost, almost half this team. How are you? Amazing. I feel like that embodies a lot of what we dream about as uh, veterans on this team. When those guys contribute and play that key role, play their role in a game like this. It was a beautiful, beautiful tournament. Think about what that means for the future. Uh, Woo! Yeah, <laughs> right. uh, yeah, baby! Woo! How did that friggin' <laughs> What I love about that game is that there was a complete fight the whole way. No, very excited. Bo Kittredge, Yokawa Oka, two of the captains of this Revolver team. They finish off the Triple Crown Tour inaugural season with a championship win, 14-10 over Seattle. The USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultrastar 175 Sport Disc, the official championship disc of USA Ultimate since 1991. The Triple Crown Tour, Ultimate's highest level of competition. Everyone's invited. USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To find out more about the sport of Ultimate or where to play in your community, visit www.usaultimate.org. The 2013 USA Ultimate National Championships come to an end as San Francisco Revolver puts a cap on their title not only winning here this weekend, but also securing a sweep of the Triple Crown Tour. Hi, everybody. Mike Cousins and Evan Lepler back here in Frisco, Texas. And this was today what we expected to see. Bo Kittredge dominant in every aspect of the game. Six assists and four goals for him. And San Francisco takes it all. Bo Kittredge brings us our Discraft play and player of the game. Well, in so many ways, Bo tells it like it is. And it was a lot of role players that help Revolver get to the championship game. They always had his abilities to help win tight games. Of course, Revolver didn't have very many tight games, but here in the championship, they featured him much more as a handler than as a deep cutter. And that creative distribution enabled Revolver to head back to the championship circle for the third time in four years. And Bo Kittredge will join us in just a moment down from the sidelines. We see everything that he was able to do today. Those nice catches there at the end of the game breaking through the cup defense from Seattle Sockeye. And, and Bo, the six assists and four goals for you today. What are you most proud of from this game? Uh, our ability to fight against uh, the adversity of the wind and the excitement of the finals. Uh, I thought we did a great job of uh, maintaining our composure. 
especially that towards the end. We didn't even really get that tight. We kept the disc moving even against that really hard four-person cup with a win. So I think that was our probably our, uh, I don't know, our best part. Bo, everybody thinks of you as a cutter and a deep threat, but you handled the disc so well today. Was that part of the game plan going in? Why were you so comfortable distributing this afternoon? Um, well, I think because they usually want me to have the disc so if it's going to be an easy reset or if they're just going to let me have it under uh that's a that's a great opportunity for us to just have a free pass so i don't know i'll take a free pass your head coach mike payne told us at halftime that you were able to do that and it wasn't necessarily part of his plan but it worked for you what have you done whether it's been six months 12 months lately to become a better handler uh, lots of throwing, focusing more on the throwing. Um, luckily, San Francisco, as you may know, has a lot of wind coming in on over it, bringing the fog and everything. So we go out and we throw a lot in the wind, and we play a lot in windy conditions. And uh, um, I don't know, basically just practicing a lot, same as any skill. Bo, last thing, what was the biggest factor in this team coming together through the course of the season? You know, a lot of guys had national team commitments like you and Ashland and Mac, but all throughout the season, from the U.S. Open until now, you guys have been the most consistent and together team. What factors brought you all together? Uh, I think refinding our GER, uh, and that came from a lot of the young players kind of rejuvenating us. I think we had eight or something new players that came in and you know brought that young energy, and a lot of our veterans kind of had that sting from uh, losing last year in the finals. Uh, you lose one time in the finals uh, when you think you should have won, and you're going to go out and try to claw and fight and work your way back to get that title you thought you should have won. San Francisco's Bo Kittredge, thank you. Congratulations on the title. Thank you, guys. Bo Kittredge, our Discraft Ultra Star player of the game. So San Francisco completes it. A tight win yesterday over Johnny Bravo. And not an easy one today, but they take down Seattle Sockeye and win for the third time in four years. A great performance from Revolver. Bo Kittredge did it in a way unlike I've ever seen. You know, when he was with the U.S. World Game team, they simply relied on his athleticism, not his throwing ability. But the way he picked the disc up off turnovers today, you know, against the zone defense that Seattle put on, you know, you got to respect Seattle's effort because they really threw everything they could at this team. They tried man, they tried zone, they tried some junky defenses too. But in the end, Revolver's consistency and the one – weapon that is unlike any other Bo Kittredge brings a championship back to San Francisco for the third time in four years they lost last year in a heartbreaker to double wide but back with the trophy San Francisco Revolver in 2013. Three champions Minneapolis Washington DC and San Francisco takes the men's crown here in Frisco to wrap up championship Sunday and the 2013 USA Ultimate National Championships. For Evan Lepler, Mike Cousins saying so long from Frisco ISD Memorial Stadium in Frisco, Texas. San Francisco 14, Seattle 10 for the men's title. To watch this entire game on replay, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.